Praise the Lord, brothers and sisters. Praise the Lord. Amen. I want to everyone to say praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Uh, for those who don't know me, I'm called Reverend Canon Agnes Mukandori, retired, but not yet tired. I want to say that we welcome the visitors from Uganda. I also lived in Uganda and I trained in Mukono when it was still, you know, when it was still a theological college, just, uh, and I say thank you so much for coming. Please feel at home. Uh, I would like to, to say that we are very excited this morning because actually this English service is now, you know, it looks nice. It looks nice. It is booming. Thank you for coming to us, brothers and sisters. You've made us lively. Thank you so much. Shall we pray? Loving Father, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight, O oh Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. We have a theme this morning which says, the theme says, those who wait upon the Lord shall see salvation. Those who wait upon the Lord shall see salvation. Can we say it together, please? Those who wait upon the Lord shall see salvation. I'm very happy for this time of sharing the word of God with you. And we are going to see different, you know, areas we are going to see first who are the people who waited upon the Lord and saw salvation. From the second reading, which was read to us, we saw two people that waited upon the Lord. The first one is a man called Simeon. Simeon was a man in Jerusalem. We are told that he was a godly man, an upright man. He was also deeply religious. And he was a man filled with the Holy Spirit. We are also told he was one of the remnant the, uh, uh, of all his age mates. Many of his, his age mates had died. He was one of the few that was remaining. And uh, he had longed to see God's salvation. And at that time, the salvation the people of Israel were waiting was the Messiah. He had longed to see the Messiah with his own eyes. He desired very much to see the Messiah. And he was a man with, who was filled with the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit had revealed to him that you will see him. You will see the Messiah. You will see the Messiah of Israel. You will see the salvation of Israel. So, he had a longing he had a desire to see the Messiah. And he kept on praying for that. And he was, you know, one time he was led by the Holy Spirit to leave his home and go to the temple. And that is the day when the Messiah, Jesus Christ, was brought to the temple for the, the purification, for the dedication of him to God. I was marveling. This man, with his longing, with his desire to see the Messiah, he came. And that, that day when he came, when he, he came to the temple, he saw Jesus Christ. Can you say amen? He saw the Messiah. Can we read verse 27, please? And see exactly what happened. 
Uh, verse 27, when this old man, Simeon, was in the temple, Mary and Joseph brought the Jesus into the temple. And he saw him. And he saw him. And he was very happy. And he said, verse 27, guided by the Spirit, he entered the temple complex. And when the parents brought in the child, Jesus, to perform for him, what was the customary under the law. Verse 28, Simon took him up in his arms and praised God. And he said, he praised God. And he said, verse 29, Now, Master, you can dismiss your, your slave in peace according to your word. What Simeon desired, what he longed for, was to see the Messiah and hold him in his eyes and in his arms. And he did. Brothers and sisters, isn't that wonderful? Praise the Lord. And the uh, verse 30 says, For my eyes have seen your salvation, you have prepared it in the presence of all people. This man waited upon the Lord and he saw God's salvation. We see another person. Uh, we see again another person called Anna. Another remnant. He was also an old woman. We are told she was a widow. <clears throat> she lost her husband after living with him for seven years old. <clears throat> for seven years only. And, uh, and uh, what did he do? When her husband died, she said, <clears throat> she said, I think I need to live in the temple. I need to stay in the temple all the days of my life. And we are told that at 84 years, after living in the temple all the days of her life, at 84 years, she saw the salvation of Israel. At the same time, like Simeon, she also wanted, she also longed, she also desired to see the salvation of Jerusalem. And we are also told that when, at that very moment, when Simeon was saying, oh my God, I have seen your salvation. Now you can dismiss me. I can go now. I can die because I have seen what I have longed for. This woman also came and on hearing Simeon's words at the presentation of Jesus Christ, she commented, she commended the child as the long-awaited Messiah and praised God for the fulfillment of his promise. And you say, Amen. This old woman also is this, her desire, her longing when she was living in the temple was to see the Messiah. Simeon and Anna waited upon the Lord day by day he waited upon, upon the Lord until God fulfilled his promises. Uh, they had a different life. This Simeon lived in the community of Jerusalem. I'm sure <clears throat> because he was an old man, he had children, he had grandchildren, but that did not Stop him from being in the front of God all the time, waiting upon the Lord for his promises to be fulfilled. We see Anna, a widow, who lived in the temple all the day. One can ask himself, what did this woman do in the temple all the days of her life? What do you think she did all the days of her life? We are told she worshipped the, she worshiped the Lord, she prayed, she fasted. Just 
to see that God's promises are right. That God's promises are fulfilled. What can one do in the temple all the days of our life? Let's see what David said in Psalm 27, verse 4. Verse 27, verse 4. Psalm 27, verse 4. What did David say? In my Bible, which is every day with Jesus, it reads, I have asked the one thing from the Lord. It is what I desire to dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. And what do I do? Gazing on the beauty of the Lord and seeking Him in His temple. Amen? For David, he was long, he also longed to live in the house of the Lord for all the days of his life. Because David, for David, it was good to be in the presence of the Lord. It was good to look at the beauty of God. To pray to him, to thank him for what he has done for him. And to seek him. My friend, when we come to the church every Sunday like today, we have programs to follow. The leader say, you know, do this, do this, do this. But I want to tell you that if you want, you come to the church alone. When you come to the church alone, you enter the church. You, 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 you find yourself alone in the church. What happens? <clears throat> you feel the presence of God there. And you want to tell God whatever you want to say to him. When uh, one time, not one time, but quite often, when I was uh, staying in one parish in Ankore, we used to sing going into the church. When you go in the house of the Lord, you feel what? Happy. You feel good. Sometimes I come to the fever to the time here in this, in this parish, and when I enter, I see the beauty of the church. I say, God, this is your place. This is where you dwell. This is where we come and tell you that you are our God. This is where we come and say you are good. God is good, isn't it? God is good. Try to be in the church alone and see the beauty of the Lord. This is what this woman was doing every day and she was satisfied by that life. That is what she desired. That is what she longed. And she was, and it, it, God helped her. And she, was, she, she saw the salvation of the Lord. Waiting upon the Lord is very important for you and for me. The prophet Jeremiah, from the first reading that was read to us, prophet Jeremiah tells us why we wait upon the Lord. Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 11. We need to know that our God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, is the only leader who knows our future. And when you know that someone knows your future, you cannot fail to go to him. You cannot fail to worship. You cannot fail to pray to him every day. As long as as God knows the future and he provides and goes with us as we fulfill his mission in the different you know, services, we can have boundless hope. We can always hope, have hope in him. 
We wait upon him because he knows our future. And he has everything we need. And he knows us very well. This is why we wait upon him. He's all confidence of getting all we need. And that is salvation. This does not mean that we are spared from pain, that we are spared from suffering, or from difficulty, or hardship. But that the Lord will see us through to a glorious conclusion. Isaiah chapter 40, verses 31, he tells us the benefits of waiting upon the Lord. Isaiah 40, verse 31. He tells us about the, the benefits of waiting upon the Lord. He says, But those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. They are men. Those who wait upon the Lord, those who trust God's word and live according to it, those who, who live by prayer. Many people also fast. Those who wait upon the Lord shall see salvation. This verse speaks in a physical realm. And it says, their strength is renewed. They will sow wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. But if we look at this verse in the spiritual realm, what is waiting upon the Lord mean? It is expecting God's spiritual strength to help, to help us rise before. It is expecting God's spiritual strength to help us rise above life's distractions and difficulty. Spiritually, we go beyond the difficulties, we go beyond the problems we have, like an eagle, eagle flies very, very high. It, is, it flies, you know, higher than all the birds, I think, in the world. It leaves everything down. When you wait upon the Lord, this is what happens. You go higher. You understand God better. And then you leave behind you the problems that you have, the difficulties you have, and other things. Point number two. I will give you an example of living difficulties, of waiting upon the law. I want to bring an example of what happened to us recently. When we had the tragedy that our brother, Dr. Livingstone, had, that he, 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 he passed away with his children, but we also heard that his wife was spared. But we have first heard that he was in a coma. She was in a coma. What did we do? The whole church. And even everyone who did not know them, but heard about it. We waited upon the Lord. We prayed for her. We said, God, Help her. Give her strength. Many people had many ideas. We had many things that happened to her. But many people are saying, she will not manage to survive. Even when she comes out of coma, she will go back and she may not even leave. I want to tell you that. Can you hear it? Imagine, can you see what happened yesterday? The, the woman, our sister, Dorcas, was able to speak. It 
was not her strength. It was what came from prayers of many people. We all prayed for her. All the prayers went to her. And she got the, 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 the strength to come here to speak to us, even to encourage some other people who are weaker than her. That is wonderful. And we say, Praise God. Waiting upon the Lord is very important, my brothers and sisters. When we ask Him something, and when God sees that we, we, really, we really desire what we pray, what do we grant Him? That is the salvation. Another point is we must have the patience when we ask something. And God tells us to wait. We need to wait. Some answers are not given right away. But we need to wait. We expect God. We expect God to fulfill his, the promises found in his word. My brothers, as I conclude, do we, you and me, do we wait upon the law? Certain things we need to know about this. We need to know that our God knows us very well. And he knows our future also. And when we come to him, we must come to him with the uh, with uh, faith that what God says in his word is right and we come to pass we need to grow mature in God's word we need to stop being children they are Christians who are children all the time they are taken by winds they go here and there Let's be strong in the Lord. Wait upon him with longing that he will answer our prayers. We need to pray. We cannot grow without reading the word of God. Quite many people don't. Is that people have Bibles. They open them here in the church. But when they go back, they put them in the bookshelf. My friends, let's use the word of God. Know what God wants uh, is telling us. Know what the word of God says about today and about tomorrow. Like Simeon and Anna, who saw the salvation of Israel, when we wait upon him, we trust his word. God answers our prayer. We are no longer waiting for the Messiah. The Messiah came a long time ago. But what did he promise to us? He said, he promised to us, pray. And you do what? What do we get when we pray? We receive, isn't it? Pray and you receive what you are praying for. Knock and what? The door will be heard. Will it be open to you? And seek. Seek the Lord and you will do what? We find him, isn't it? And another, and another, uh, another word says, pray without ceasing. Pray without stopping. You pray today, tomorrow you don't. You think God answers prayers? Yes. But there is where he says, pray without ceasing. You pray continuously. I have seen in this church during the 40 days of fasting many people pray daily. We bring our prayer requests. We put them in the basket. The pastor prays for them. We also pray daily, daily for 40 days. And at, at the end of 40 days after waiting upon the Lord for 40 days, God answers our prayers. Praise the Lord. Let's pray without ceasing. Many people have given their testimony. 
doing, I prayed for 40 days for this and this and that, and God has answered our prayer. God must see in your heart the longing, the desire. What you have in you when you are praying to Him. There are so many things we are looking for. There are many things we are looking for. And whatever is troubling you, whatever need you have, my friend, my dear sister and brother, tell it to the Lord. Say, Father, I, I am praying for this and that. I'm praying for you, you to answer my prayer. And you pray about it many times. Don't pray just for one. Pray all the time. Wait upon him in prayer. Wait upon him in worship. Wait upon him in reading his word. And God will answer you. This is what we mean. Those who wait upon the Lord will do what? We will see salvation. We will, they are, they are, they are prayers will be answered. We need to have that longing. Why was Simeon and Anna had that longing, that desire? Because they were, they were worried, they were concerned with their land, with Jerusalem, with Israel. They thought that when the Messiah comes, he will heal them, he will fight for them, he will, uh, he will uh, save them. What is your longing? What are you longing for? I want to ask a question, then end with that. A Christian must know that, must be concerned with his friend, with the, all the family members. Are all the family members, are all your family members saved? Have they got salvation? This is something that we need to do. Pray for your family members. Wait upon the Lord and tell them about your family members, about those who are difficult even to be taught, not about those who don't believe even in God. How about the people you work with? How about our neighbor? How about the Christians we pray together in the church? Is everyone here in English style saved? Let's join together and pray for them. There is nothing else that we do will help us. But if we wait upon the Lord, God will answer our prayers. My brothers and sisters, those who wait upon the Lord will see salvation. Those who wait upon the Lord, their answers will be answered. May the Lord bless us today, and may we walk, may we, may we long to grow to maturity, may we become mature Christians, and may we pray with the confidence that our Lord, who knows us, who knows our future, will go with us through this life, and our answers will be given. Let us pray. Loving Father in heaven, we thank you because your word is true. Your word is true. Your word is sure. Teach us to be mature Christians. That if we are praying for something, let us really pray for it. Let us wait upon you, Lord. Let us long to, to get an answer from you. Let desire to get an answer from you. Loving Father, you see everyone here in this church. Teach us to be mature. Teach us to know you more. Teach us to come to you with our problem and to 
to know that they, our problems they will be solved. Teach us to come to you with prayer requests, knowing very well that our prayer requests will be answered. Thank you, Lord. Thank you so much, Lord. To you be the glory, and to us many blessings. I pray this in the Lord, in the precious name of our Lord Jesus Christ. God bless you.